Let's open them up. Scalpel. You looking at me, Dino? We're losing adrenaline. Even angels need to relieve their tension once in a while. And that's why you join us today in heaven at Quentin Tarrant Tea Time. For we will be using this finer Virtua Cop contraption throughout today's show. Later on, my own tensions will be being relieved by the appearance of our two special Biker Grove guests, Donna Eyre and Vicky Taylor. But now it's tulip time for our event, which we like to call Rosa Rumble. Sega's Virtua Corp has turned out to be easily the best arcade shoot 'em up since the Falklands War. But as the empty pockets of many a punter will testify, it's as hard as a pit bull terrier wearing a chieftain tank for trousers. For this event, we've shoved in a top arcade champ to show us how it's done. His mission is to quite literally play through the entire game and using only one tiny credit before the end of the show. This most single of credits will give him just five lives to sustain him through three levels of tooled up Tarantinos, helpless hostages and bazooka wielding bosses. Although it may look like a simple case of shoot everything that moves, there's a couple of things to look out for. It's very important to reload your weapon every time you've got the chance. This is done by pointing the gun away from the stream and firing. The barrel in the bottom right of the screen indicates how many bullets you've got left. Each time a player is hit, they lose one of their five lives. Lose all five, and it's game over. And here to play Virtua Cop today is Martin Mathers. Martin, today you are James Bond. Indeed, Dominic. Licensed to wear an ill-fitting suit, so it seems. You said it, Martin. And now, actually, you appeared on Series 1 yeah. of Games Master. Yes. And how did you go on? I failed. You <laughs> did fail. I did. So, uh, are you going to do better tonight? Uh, of course, I'm going to come back to get my revenge. I want so, that joystick. So, you are convinced that you can play through the whole of Virtua Cop and complete it before the show ends? Not only am I going to complete it on one credit, I'm going to get a perfect score. So, what makes you think you can do this challenge then, Martin? Well, I think it's because, unlike most of the people we have on the show, not only am I a completely true professional, I'm also a bit of a cocky git. It's very honestly put, Martin. OK, time is running out. You better get started. And keeping a watchful eye over Martin throughout today's show is Dave Professor Perry. Professor, listen, what's going to be the most difficult thing about Martin completing this challenge within the time? Um, the difference, difficulty is going to be racking up the points. He's got to score 9,999,999 points. That's a lot of points. So he's going to have to use the points. multiplier at the top of the screen. He uses that by hitting targets as often as possible, and that increases the amount that the score he hits on those targets is multiplied by. It could be anything up to times nine. OK, we can see Martin then. He's working his way safely through this at the moment. Is it going to be like is there reloading problems and things like that in this, Dave? There is with the screen he's got, because on the smaller screen version, it's easier. You don't have to move the gun so far, because you take the gun off the screen and click to reload. On the large screen he's on, and being so close, he's got to do a really vigorous arm movement to load that gun. OK, we can see he's dispatching these guys with relative ease. The bottom right-hand corner of the screen, you can see how many bullets he's got left in his gun. When that becomes empty, you will get the reload sign. That's when Martin has to flick it away, as Professor was telling you. You can also see his hearts at the bottom as well. He's got five just now. He's probably not going to have to worry about that too much. So much shooting action going on, Professor. Yeah, he's doing really well. He's taking everyone out. He's being very, very accurate. And like I said, this isn't a single shot game. You get more points by hitting the guys as many times as possible before they hit the ground. So he wants to just keep hammering into them and keep that gun loaded. OK, that was a fantastic bouncer from the last guy's shot. They are quite rubbery when they're hitting the ground, these guys, Dave. They do. They do bounce about, which gives you plenty of opportunity to shoot them. That's a hostage in front of the screen. You don't want to hit one of them because you'll lose a life if you do. Well, Professor and I are going to keep getting excited about Martin's performance. Personally, we don't want to spoil you, though, so we're going to go over to today's news. 
proof that some people haven't heard that 16-bit is dead is a new gadget that allows you to prove you're the tops of the Mega Drive or the Super NES without leaving your home. Hyperscore grabs your high score at the end of a game then allows you to transmit it to a central scoreboard via a 40p phone call. It's then immediately added to the national high score table for that game. The tables are shown on teletext or you can call up for your position and the top monthly players in each league will win some fantastic excuse for a prize. Mortal Kombat 3 is just one of 20 games compatible when Hyperscore is released next month for 30 notes. ND500 is the latest in Sega's lineup of top racing arcade games. Using the same Model 2 technology as Daytona and Sega Rally, ND500 offers a choice of three tracks, four viewpoints, multiple players and gameplay that's faster than me sprinting after an attractive lady going downhill on a bike. Before the F1 Gym 2 game comes out later on in the year, the wee worm has gone all Hollywoody on us and now has its own cartoon show. The 5 million quid 13 part series has just started on cable channel TCC and includes characters and stunts straight from the game and some naff songs that thankfully aren't. Oasis it ain't. Groovy! Hi, my name is Michael Jackson. All right, mate. They call me the beer hunter. They call me that because I drink beer for a living. Really? I thought you were a supermodel. So listen up, ladies. If you explore this beer hunter CD ROM, you'll be able to amaze your friends with your uncanny knowledge of the beer making process, swap stories about malting, and squabble over the best label design. Hello again, and welcome to the field guide section of this program. You can even ask Mike what his favourite beers are. Just don't mention smoked porter. Smoked porter. This is powerfully smoky. Uh-huh. Really get that smoky aroma. Really? And then as you taste it, there's more smokiness, and it's a slightly... Smoky? ...woody-tasting smokiness. Damn! Very yes, pleasant. Mike really loves his smoked porter. I once had this beer for breakfast uh, with bagels and locks at a picnic in the middle of an ice field in Alaska. Yeah, sure. Funny he never married. Anyway, over to Mike for some final words for those people unsure whether to buy Tashinden or Beer Hunter. I encourage you to expand your palate for a good beer. Of course, it might take a lifetime. Hey, no rush, mate. Martin Mathers is still with us, still working his way through Virtua Copy. Hasn't blown it yet. Dave, what point have we reached now? Well, he's coming towards the end of the first stage and he hasn't lost a life or even been hit yet. And a little while back he picked up an automatic weapon, so he's got some rapid fire going on. OK, he's just turning this corner here. He's going to... Oh, darkness is looming. That can only tell you one thing, he's going to come to a boss. Let's have a listen to what he's got to say. Pretty bold, aren't we? I'll take care of you myself. Right, I'm not actually come. that scared by him, actually, Dave. Okay, he's not all that scary. He looks a bit silly, and he's got a very square missile launcher, which Mark's now, Martin's now dealing with. The first thing to do is to take out these missiles as they come to you, and then hit the boss, because if you ignore the missiles, they're going to take your lives. OK, well, he's hammering those missiles with the relative aplomb there. He is. The boss's, the boss's energy level's at the top, as you can see, and he's nearly gone. That's it. He's done the boss. No, no he's not. Oh, what happened to the boss? He kind of keeled over for a bit. What's he doing now? No, he's giving up. He's putting his hands up. He's going to disappear. Soft lad. But it's a typical Hollywood ending because he comes back for one last go and Martin's <laughs> finished him off. OK, so at the end of level one, you can see that Martin's got nearly one and a half million points. Still some points short of that 9.999999 million he's got to get. But the next two levels are going to be a lot harder and longer. So there's uh, almost a cupboard full of points on offer. Now, the problem is if we do go on to anything else, there is a possibility Martin might have blown it and won't be here by the time we come back. We are prepared to take that risk because I cannot wait any longer for some hot celebrity type action. So let's go over to Games Master to find out what they'll be playing. What I wanted was a simple but brutal challenge from my next contestants. So I've chosen the popular arcade beat-em-up King of Fighters 95. I've selected the female fighters, as their agility makes them particularly lethal. The winner is the one to take two rounds first. Bring on the fighters! Grappling under my watchful gaze today, please welcome from Biker Grove, Vicky Taylor and Donna Ayer. <laughs> Show, Vicky. Oh, 
OK, right, uh, Vicky, first of all, you play Angel yep. in Battlegrove. What do you like about that character? <laughs> um, she's dead sweet. She gets on with everyone, but she can be stubborn. She's always stubborn, stubborn to Charlie. Yeah. And flirtatious <laughs> as well. Yeah, okay. she's a bit of a flirt. Like Vicky. <laughs> uh, Donna, you won Child of the Year once in 1989 years or something. Years and years ago. <laughs> what did you have to do for that? Put a sweet smile on and some baby so you, clothes. You, you don't have to do child things, like you don't have to steal from your mother's purse or anything like that, or oh, no. fly out to fields. No. Those. And so you're both fighting in this game tonight. Have you ever had any fights in real life, like up in Newcastle when you're filming? you ever had a kick in? Mm, no. no. <laughs> We've had a couple been, of disagreements. I've been up to okay. Newcastle twice and got my head kicked in both times, <laughs> <laughs> funnily enough. But then, uh, fair enough, obviously, just don't like bald people up there. That's uh, what it is, it's the accent. Good. What's wrong with my accent? <laughs> Are you starting on me, you two? No. no. It's not too late we to get that, that little ginger girl from the show. <laughs> we can do that. OK, right, well, uh, we're all going to wash our smalls in preparation for the challenge, which is coming up after the break. Apart from, of course, Martin Mathers, who's got more than enough to worry about than a pair of dirty smalls, because he'll be continuing and hopefully climaxing on Virtua Cop after the break. Welcome back. Vicky Taylor and Donna Eyre from Biker Grove are about to try the luck on King of the Fighters 95 on the Neo Geo. We spoke to them before the break and I can say they're both fantastic ladies. Fantastic bloke action going on still on Virtual Cop. Martin Mathers working his way through it. You alright there, Martin? Fine. Rick Henderson from PC Review is uh, eagerly watching this scrap with me. Rick, tell us some of the strengths and weaknesses of both characters then. Well, my Shinui which is the character that Donna's playing, has got immense um, popularity right. and is extraordinarily quick. It's best to get in there quickly. And King, the one dressed in a suit, which Vicky is playing, mm -hmm. is actually very, very slow, but is very good at power, power plays. They've both got a couple of good special moves. Mm -hmm. uh, Mai has got the flying squirrel dance, oh, that sounds, sounds very that good. Sounds and swirling. King's got the surprise rose. And is that, is that a surprise? It's a bit of a surprise to me, but... Uh, if they manage to actually pull it off, but okay. there you go. <laughs> All right, thanks very much, Rick. So it's the best of three by situation. Whoever wins two will emerge golden joysticks up. Best of luck, Donna. Best of luck, Vicky. Let's start the fight. Ready, go! Okay, so off we go. Donna's on the left-hand side. She's uh, Mai in the little red bikini thing. And Vicky is King, the lady in the suit. You can see the energy bars at the top of the screen. Quite level at the moment, Rick. Yeah, you can see she's just jumping over, using the height advantage in the air, because Mai's very good at jumping around. Fantastic roll kick she managed to pull off there. Oh, some fantastic kicking yeah, actions. She's got her legs right on neck there. Yeah, very good splits there as well. Um, but That's the... one way of putting it. <laughs> oh, now something's flashing up the top there, Rick. What does that mean? That means that uh, King. King is actually very close to dying now. The re when it reds, flashes red and yellow, that they're means that they're both flashing now, though. So uh, Vicky up. managed to pull it on back very well. They're still very close to dying, though. Time is ticking out. Will they get a knockout before the time runs out? We haven't actually seen any blocking, which no, is it. one thing. There's a lot of jumping around and hitting each other, but no oh, blocking. Oh, I didn't drop you there, Rick. Mai has got one more hit, basically, and Mai will be out. The time is out, but uh, King had slightly more energy left, so the first bout goes to Vicky. <laughs> OK, off we go for round two, then. As you can see at the bottom, they've got pow bars. Every time they get hit, they get more and more angry, and it can unleash far greater blows. OK, we saw another one of those fantastic split moves, and King's energy is right down there just now. It's a fantastic yeah. comeback from Donna here, Rick. It looks like we're going to go into a third round, definitely. King only needs another couple of small hits here. And she'll have popped it completely, and that's, that's it. it. Final fantastic flying punch there. Donna pulls it level. So off we go for the third and final deciding bite. Remember, Donna is in the red and Vicky is in the, I would call that, a sort of bottle green suit there. At the moment, not too much hits been there uh, planted upon each other. Rick, what would you like to see in this bout? We haven't actually seen any of the special moves. I mean, mine's also got deadly flying... What is it? De deadly flying bees. Ninja okay. bees or something. Well, that sounds very intriguing. What you see from the energy bars at the moment, it's Vicky who's in slightly more trouble. I thought a nice bit of a double combo there. Oh, it's flashing now. Vicky is flashing. Yes, Vicky is flashing. <laughs> There's Donna. a sight you every day. <laughs> <laughs> Tonna's going in there with the fan. She can actually win this belt quite easily now. She but no, no, no it's Vicky's great coming back. It's a great rear guard action, though, from Vicky. Vicky's it's, fighting back like there's no tomorrow. It's very, very even now. They only need both a couple of small low. punches in there or a quick kick. The time's running out, though. They're both missing each other now. And oh, that's, that's it. it. That's the final hit. Donna's Donna. got it. Vicky fights with us. Donna is the winner.
OK, right, Vicky, you took the first bout and then it all kind of started to go wrong. What happened? What can I say? Donna's character's far too fast for my character. Oh. I mean, when my character does get the punch in, she is quite powerful, but... It's just too quick. Fault. Yeah, it's the computer's fault. Anyway. I can't blame. It's too late to blame the computer kids. now. <laughs> I so couldn't play any computer games at all, but I'm a fanatic now. I love it. I need to well, you were, you were doing some fantastic moves there on Vicky. Oh, yes. What, what, what were they about? She kind of moved towards her, put, grabbed her with her legs and flung her over. It like, was, and all of that. It was a visual treat uh, for all of us concerned. Well, I have to say, actually, I didn't actually want you to come on the show. Oh, I didn't think we'd get on. I didn't think I'd like you. Well, but... we've been thinking about it for yeah. about four months now. Someone it come warned on. us. Someone we were warned, warned about us. the presenter. Yeah. That's Ant and Deck talking rubbish. Do you know what I mean? But I do have to say, having met you, you are much nicer than Ant and Deck because I thought they, were, they smelled a little bit. You were yeah. nicer than what he described you as as well. Oh, they well, didn't really like nice. you either. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't describe oh, me as being yeah, very nice. Oh, you should have heard what they said about you. You can't trust short, jordy blokes. <laughs> That's in the Bible or something like <laughs> that, somewhere. OK, well, listen, it's uh, prize presentation time now and after much sweating of limbs, the Games Master Golden Joystick goes to Donna. Yeah. <laughs> so let's yeah. another round of applause for our two special guests, Vicky Taylor and Donna here. Well, I'd love to spend all day with these girls, they are fantastic, but I am a man, I have a job to do and it's time now to check on Martin's progress on Virtua Cop. So Dave, how's he getting on? Well done, on level one, Martin may have had it all his own way, but he's finding it a completely different kettle of fish on level two, with the body count and hostages turned way up. He's managed to keep his cool and his multiplier on nine, so we're going to have a look at some particularly hot replays of our wannabe Bond in action. As you can see from this piece of action, it's complete mayhem out there. There are hostages running about everywhere. He's got to be very careful not to hit them or he's going to lose a life. He took that pylon out deliberately not to hit the man running across the screen. This is a particularly nice piece of action, a favourite of mine. You'll see all the, all the bad guys are targeted. Now, they're easy to hit, but what Martin does, he spots a guy in the background. You'll see him to the left now, and he takes him out. He wasn't targeted, but he scores an extra life for that. Good shooting. Now, this is a particularly tricky situation, one that every cop dreads, even Virtua cops. There are hostages running everywhere, and Martin has to be careful not to hit them, but he avoids them all. They're running right through the baddies. He takes out all the baddies and leaves the good guys intact. Fantastic. And having gone through all that, the end of level boss was no trouble for him. His missiles didn't even hit Martin, took him out in mid-flight, one in the chest. Goodbye, bad guy. Well, that takes Martin's score to 6,408,800. You don't need to be a mathematician to know that at two-thirds of the way through the game, that's not enough. We need some fancy shooting, Martin. All right, mate, not much longer. OK, Martin is now going into the office there. Just warped the guy up in the back. And there are lots of big blokes in black suits there. He's taking them all down with relative ease. David, looks like he's going to do this. Yeah, he's doing very, very well. He's got the machine gun at the moment as he comes around the corner, which is very useful. He's going to have to switch it to the automatic because you can't reload the machine gun. Right, he's on automatic now. This is a Mexican wave beyond the desk. <laughs> Dealt with those, no problem at all. They've gone back the other way. They've it's gone the, back for more. It's a tricky moment now with the hostage because if he shoots the guy in the chest, he could take the hostage. That's it. He took his kneecapped out. Fine shooting there. Okay, so more people coming out using that corner to try and hide from Martin, but they cannot hide from the Mederster at all. Round the corner there. He had a magnum there. He could have picked up. He chose to ignore that. And now it's he here. doesn't Office need it. He doesn't need the magnum. He doesn't need anything. There is still a chance though Martin can come across. We're very near the end of the game. If you want to see if he can do it, then please stay here while we go to today's reviews. First up, Dave and Rick try to look moody over the Saturn's Virtua Fighter remix. This means they got some hip DJ in to add a couple of drum beats and a chicka chicka huh noise. Or maybe not. Well, Virtua Fighter really has been the Saturn's flagship game. And Virtua Fighter remix bridges the gap between Virtua Fighter and Virtua Fighter 2. It's all the usual characters from the first game, but they've all been guru shaded like in the second game. And it's really quite good, although there aren't many differences in the playability. I've never been a great Virtua Fighter fan. I've never liked the playability itself. And I certainly didn't like the graphics. So they have improved at least one of my quibbles. The only problem is, I still don't like the playability. It's still, to me, the slowest of the fighting games, 3D fighting games, I hasten to add, that are on the market. K.O. Next up, top arcade racing action Ahoy on the PC with Screamer. And being a virgin game, expect some crazy controversial ad campaign to follow. 
Screamer finally brings console racing action to the home computer. Basically, this is Ridge Racer for the PC, combining glorious graphics and impressive speed. In fact, this is probably the best racing game I've seen on this format. It is certainly the best arcade racing game on this format, but that's what's inherently wrong about driving games on the PC. The PC owner is a more discerning person. They need more. They can't have the absolute speed that a console version of the same type of game would have. For me, this game had it all. It had arcade action, nice tracks, good rivals, eight-player playability, um, everything I wanted on a PC. Finally, Destruction Derby on the PlayStation is a game that encourages you to smash into other cars, which isn't big or clever and can have your eye out if you're not careful. It looks like Ridge Racer. It's got fantastic graphics, especially when your car gets battered around by the opposition. Certainly in Destruction Derby mode, where you're centred in the middle of an entire arena and cars just pummel you into the sides. The only problem is, it's got no playability. Yeah, I think the problem with Destruction Derby is perhaps they've tried to make it a little bit too realistic. They've taken all the fun out of it. It is just like driving a real car. When you do damage, you see damage on the car, you see damage on the other cars. There's no guns in it, though. There's no fantasy. You want a bit of fantasy in your games playing. And most of all, they've tried to make it like rock and roll racing. They've got the commentary in there and everything, but there's no, none of the playability, none of the fun. This week's demo for PC blokes and ladies is the allegedly simple but addictive puzzle game Zoop. Log on to the number on screen or you can get it via our webpage, the address is at the bottom. With a 14-4 modem it'll take about 15 minutes to download but get permission from the sucker who pays the bill. Right, Martin Meadows is in the final stage of his Virtua Cop event challenge. We're just about to move on to a final boss type situation. There he is, he still hasn't taken a hit at all. You can see bottom right corner, seven hearts, he's picked up a couple, no hits yet at all. Dave, now what's this boss going to do? Well, this boss is going to turn into a robot and here he is. And the thing to do is to take the missiles out on the top. That's just what Martin's doing. Take out the missile launchers to stop him from firing at you. What do these missiles do? Do they home in on you or anything like that? They'll home in on you, they'll come straight for you and they'll take a life if they catch you. Although Martin's got seven, he doesn't want to lose one now. Not at this stage, not when he's so close. OK, we can see the boss's energy at the top of the screen. It's getting very, very low indeed. He's doing fantastic well. That's the boss done. That's the, the guy, end of the boss. This is a, must be near the end now, Dave, surely. Well, it would be normally, but you've got the helicopter boss because what Martin's done is he finished the game in the exact sequence from beginner, me medium level to expert level, and that means he's got an extra boss to contend with. OK, well, that's great, but it's also a bit of a pity because we're actually getting very, very close to the end of the show. We've only got about a minute of airtime left. It would be a tragedy if Martin does manage to complete this with maximum score, but we've gone to the adverse. Let's hope that doesn't happen. You can see the energy uh, bar of the boss there about three quarters way through. Dave, what's he got to do with this guy? He's just got to keep taking these missiles out, and then when he's got a free moment, hit the helicopter and get that energy bar down. He's gone off now. He's yeah. done a runner. Oh, no, he's back. He goes off to reload, gives you a breather, but Martin's very slow. He's oh, off the line. Oh, he's taking a hit, but fantastic. That's the only hit he's taken in the entire game. He doesn't have a lot of time left. Oh, oh no, we're going to run out of time. Come on, Martin. Well, this trigger finger action has really tied Martin. You can see how slow he is now, whereas before he was piling bullets into the enemies. Now he's much, much slower. OK, we can see the energy bar is at the bottom of the screen. That it's getting lower and lower. As far as Dave and I know, he has got the maximum point still so far. We won't know that until the end, though, completely. Come on, Martin, only a couple more clicks left. We're getting dangerously close to the of end of transmission. Not. He won't have finished his challenge. If he doesn't do it in time, that's, that's it. it. He's the put up the boss. Gone. Let's see what the score is. Has he got the maximum? And the maximum score, yes, 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 Martin has done it, that's it, that's all we've got time for, no time for a formal presentation, so, oi, Martin, well done, mate. Thanks very much, bye-bye.